What comes to your mind when you hear about the green revolution? Wheat, maize, paddy, overpopulated fields of mostly North Indian states like Punjab or Haryana, Norman Borlaug. How about M. S. Swaminathan? Any one of them or all? But I bet only few can associate Pandurang Khan Khoje with the revolution. This is what the brain drain does to us. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Savita Mishra and this is TFI Post. Revolutionary, inventor, innovator, agriculturalist, nationalist, empathetic. These are some of the few adjectives which can be used to define Pandurang. He was born on 7th November 1884 at Vardha. His father worked as a petitioner writer, which means that the child had no dearth of knowledge sources to learn from. To top it all, his grandfather had fought in the 1857 independence movement. The jigin started to manifest when young Pandurang relocated to Nagpur. Figures like Bal Gangadhar Tilak, Swami Dayanand Saraswati and their movements inspired him a lot. According to Live History India, studying the history of revolution, he became an admirer of the way in which French and American revolutionaries toppled the existing regimes. To put it simply, he liked historical weak ones, mastering their courage to thrash the stronger. This may be the reason why Bal Gangadhar Tilak sent him to Japan. Japan had beaten the massive Tsar army in the Russia-Japan War of 1905. There he got to meet people like Sun Yat-sen. During his East Asia sojourn, Pandurang got an interest in farming. In 1906, Americans called for Chinese laborers to rebuild the earthquake hit San Francisco. Pandurang also went with them, but his body was not made for slavery-type physical strain. According to his daughter Shivani Sahane, Pandurang worked as a waiter and hospital attendant to survive. He used the earnings to study agriculture at California and Berkeley universities. But his zeal for revolutions didn't die. In free time, Pandurang used to study how Latin American countries and Ireland were fighting against Spain and the British Raj respectively. In 1910, he enrolled in Mount Tamal Pius Military Academy to train for armed rebellion against British. Confident Pandurang then strived to form the Indian Independence League with Sohan Singh Bhakna and Pandit Kashmir. All three then roped in Professor Lala Hardayal of Stanford University and formed a Ghadar party. The party then went on to infuse nationalistic sentiments among economic migrants and people located back home. Patriotic songs and articles were being read by Indian soldiers fighting for the British in World War I. The British sensed a smoke of mutiny and started to look for Pandurang. In fact, with the help of Germans, Pandurang was trying to enter India through Baluchistan. But within one year, Gada revolt failed. Now Pandurang was visiting places like Berlin, Paris and even Russia to meet like-minded individuals. In Russia, he found a man who was a foe of the common enemy. It was Vladimir Lenin. Eventually, with the victory of the Brits in the First World War, Pandurang was forced to fly to Mexico. Here, he was faced with a hunger crisis. As they say, tough times create tough men. Pandurang saw millions of Mexicans suffering alongside him due to low produce of crops. He started looking for old Mexican colleagues whom he had met in the USA. Ramon P. De Negri, a friend, had become Minister of Agriculture and another, Louis Manzon, was a parliamentarian. He became a professor at the National Agricultural School in Chapingo due to his interest in agriculture. He worked day and night with Mexican farmers. Pandurang was head of Mexican corn breeding program. Under him, lots of new varieties of corn with higher breeding capacity were developed. The new variety was aved by other Latin American countries as they were suffering from the same problem of food insecurity. Due to Pandurang's efforts, people of these countries went from sleeping hungry to having more than required amount of food. He also developed drought-resistant wheat. Later, Norman Burlog brought this variety of wheat to Punjab, fostering the Green Revolution. Students of plant genetics owe a huge debt to Pandurang. It is due to him that the subject got mainstreamed. The Mexican government later appointed him as the director to the Department of Agriculture. 
In Mexico, Pandurang is a revered figure. Diego Rivera has painted a mural depicting Pandurang at the head of the dinner table. Pandurang is cutting bread with a knife with farmers and soldiers standing beside him. Uh, the table is occupied by different countries benefiting from it. When India got political independence in 1947, Pandurang sought to return to his own country. Initially, the Nehru government ardently followed the British ban on him. It didn't grant visas for Pandurang, his Belgian wife Jen and daughters Savitri and Maya. After eight years of ardent efforts, he was finally successful in returning to native country. Pandurang rejected the government's economic aid to him and asked to spend it on agriculture in India. He spent his later years cutting off from public life while reading old Indian literature in Nagpur. In the midst of Green Revolution, his soul left the body on 22 January 1967. By then, he had seen the fruits of his efforts in Mexico, benefiting his own countrymen and women.